This podcast presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The host purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only answer to paranormal phenomena. We have not yet begun to touch the surface into these supernatural occurrences. With that being said, welcome to the Paranormal Journal. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Paranormal Journal. I'm your host, John Curley, and we got our co-host in the chat room and on the air, Don Frank. What's up, homie? What's up, everybody? What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? We are back for another episode. What's going on, brother? Live. Yes, sir. Live in action. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up for us, man. I'm uh, I'm pumped, dude. Really pumped. Yeah, me too, man. We got Fort Mifflin coming up. Yeah, yeah. We got Fort Mifflin coming up. Uh, that's coming up real soon. So next week. Um, I know uh, at one point I uh, thought maybe we might back out of it at one time, but uh, I think we're going to do it anyway. So I don't know if we're going to have enough people going to be able to pay and go or not. So, but we're going, brother. Everybody paid up. So Sweet. I got a couple people that, uh, <clears throat> a couple other people that want to go. So uh, I'm going to throw that invitation out to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's cold. It's whooping my butt, boy. Um, oh, you got a cold? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It stinks. I hate it. Tis the season. Yeah. It's killing the temperature me. Temperature change. Oh, yeah, man. I've been battling for like two weeks now. It's terrible. Jeez. Yeah. My voice was all messed up. I couldn't even talk. That's why I haven't really done a show. I couldn't talk very well, man. My throat was all jacked up. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, man, we're back, brother. We are back. So, what's, what's been going on, man? You seen anything around the internet lately that's uh, really uh, made you laugh your ass off about paranormal stuff or what? <laughs> well, that's about every day. But <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not as of lately. <laughs> I see one today, dude. I try it was to stay. Great. I, I see one today. Oh, yeah, what you see? Oh, yeah. Somebody using one of those phone apps with the, uh, the SLS on there saying they were ghosts. And I was like, huh. oh, no, dude, please. Stop. <laughs> People, if you're using a phone yeah. app that goes to, you might as well just go outside and throw your phone in the trash can. That stuff is not, it's not, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not meant for that kind of stuff. It's just a phone app, man. You know, you're not picking up ghosts. It's, well, yeah, we, it's not meant for that on a phone. You know what I mean? An SLS is not meant for that. It's not yeah. even designed for you know, a phone. We, we it's talk not, about, you know? Yeah. And we know it can, you know, it know where you're at. It can listen to the questions you're asking and things of that nature. So, yeah, but the phone app's not even designed for SLS. SLS is a totally different system. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> they can't put uh, that yeah. on the phone. Yep. You know what I mean? And Jeez. people are putting it out there yeah. as paranormal evidence, dude. Like you can't do that, man. You can't do that. You know, I, I, I tell you, it never ceases to amaze me when you look around the internet and you see this crap. You're like, wow, man! I can't. I just can't believe people are out there saying that they're catching ghosts on this shit. Well, you know, they'll do what they think is entertaining, I guess. I don't know. They just make up whatever they want, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts, dude. I mean, <laughs> you really think you're catching ghosts on on a, on a phone app? Like, come on, man! It's not. It's not designed for that, at all. No. No, I'll just not. go outside and, you know, say I'm possessed and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hot Halloween time, too. <laughs> you know? Throw a couple. <laughs> yeah, you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, throw I mean, a couple you might get away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, throw a couple F-bombs yeah, you... and you're possessed, you know? So. I mean, that, at... Or that yeah. there, they might lock. They yeah. might lock you up, too, though. Be careful. Yeah. I said they yeah, might look... lock you up, too. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, look at look at all the years that you know we've been doing it. We've never seen anything demonic. No, no, never. Not 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 a single case that we've ever done has proven to me that it's demonic. Yeah, Maybe I've negative. Never, but yeah, I've never seen anything. I mean, we've seen some really strange stuff, no. but nothing to that 
extent to say it was it was demonic, you know. No, that's what I like to put out here about the show. That's why I like doing the show because I like to educate people about paranormal stuff too. Because we've been doing it a long time, and you know, you see these groups out here that are all doing this. They want to be demonologists, and you know, <clears throat> you got to tread lightly with that kind of stuff, man. You're dealing with the public and people, and you know, it's a really touchy subject about possession and stuff like that, and it's really rare. You know, yeah, it's really rare. And I'm yeah, not it, saying it doesn't exist because I think it does exist, but it's just it's really rare, you know, that you come across something like that. Well, you don't want to go up, be out there messing with things that you have no no idea about. You know, don't go out there pretending that you know how to do this or that or that or try to get rid of something in somebody's home that you can't do. You know, you're just you're just throwing smoke out there really i mean you're just, just telling lies and these people yeah. are relying on you your people are relying on you to get some answers to what's going on if you go out there and just say oh yeah you got eh, a couple demons in your house and they're gonna look at you like what how how can i get rid of this I'm yeah like, oh we'll, we'll just throw some sage around just tell them to go go away it'll be fine yeah it doesn't work like it doesn't work like that no hell no man i mean like like i said i brought a priest in that one house that we did in uh york remember and we we're doing a blessing yeah. and, and and it heard a growl like Ugh. dude this sounded like a german shepherd was in the kitchen and the priest looked at me he's like where's the dog i'm like there's no dog he's like there's no yeah. dog his eyeballs were like bugging out of his head he's like should we do the blessing again i was like i don't know you're the priest you think it's gonna work he's like uh, we'll do the fast version. <laughs> he was just like zipping through the house, dude. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Phew, jumped in his was. car. He was gone, dude. And you know, remember they wound nice. up moving out. You remember they wound up moving out after that. We did the reveal, yeah, and we had all did. that crazy stuff that happened, you know, during the reveal. Um, that was nuts. Man, I don't blame them. You know, after a while, you, if nothing's working, I mean, what other choice do you have but to move out and hope that it doesn't follow you? Yeah, That's luckily it didn't. But you know, when they when those people moved out, Don, I did find that. Remember, there's two guys that were that were moving in uh, after them. You know, one of those guys committed suicide, man, in that Jeez. house. No, no, that's insane. Because now that's just going to increase the activity in the house. You would think. Yeah, I mean, dude, as soon as that's the first hard. just doing just doing the walkthrough of that house when I was in the basement, dude, I was hearing disembodied voices right away. I mean usually don't have that kind of stuff happen. I mean, I was hearing disembodied voices in the first 10 minutes of walking down the basement. I heard a female voice say, like, help me. And I'm like, what the hell? That was a voice. Wow. It, yeah, dude, like, I was hearing stuff, like, right away. And I'm like, oh, this is going to get interesting, you know? And it did for us, you know? It really got interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you remember when we went for that reveal and, you know, we left and they called us right back that stuff was happening. Remember, the, they said the bedroom door uh, had slammed shut and then it was like banging. Some, it sounded like someone was pounding on the door. Yeah, we had to go back out there that night. Yeah, I remember, we went remember right that. back out there, we turned around and went right back. <laughs> they were all standing in the driveway, remember? They didn't even go in the house. They wouldn't go in. Yeah. And, man, you went in there. and I was Yeah, like, that's how scared they got. Yeah, dude, I remember we remember it got weird. Remember we went back in there. Sure enough, the bedroom door was shut. And we were like, Well, the bedroom door is shut. Uh, here we go. This could get interesting. And it did. Remember, we went in there and yeah, we seen things moving in the bedroom. That bedroom was crazy, man. All the little the little things moving around in yeah. there that we saw in the dresser. The TV got and, distorted. Uh, the TV had... Yep. That was that... weird. That was freaky, man. I was like, whoa, that was creepy as shit. I was like, what the hell was that? You're like, I don't know, dude. And that didn't you say you seen something? I thought you said you seen something or something when we were in there. Something white I, or I, something. I I may have at that time. I like I said it's been a while, so but it's possible. Yeah, that's the house where you After guys while the me. cases start to run together. <laughs> <laughs> that's the house where you guys left me in there asleep that time. I was tired. I woke up and everybody yeah. was gone. I'm like, you son of a bitch has left me in the house by myself. <laughs> I was of all pissed, the cases, dude. that was a good one. Yeah, I like woke up, man. I'm like, where's everybody at? Dude, like everybody was gone. I'm like on the couch, like zonked out. I'm like, dude, they just bailed out on my ass. What the hell? 
<laughs> I was like, oh, wait, let's go. Uh, let's go outside a bit. Let's see what happens. You wake up. Oh, man. I see, you know, you're, you're freaking out. Yeah, I could have been getting like freaking thrown around the house. You guys are out there chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, worry. Like dude. I said, I was watching on camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So tonight we are going to talk about a really prolific case that me and Don did back in 2010 up in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. We did an episode on the haunted on animal planet. Um, man, really cool case. It, the episode was called the bloody man. And it still runs to this day on Netflix. You can go to Netflix and watch that episode. It was called the bloody man on uh, animal planets, the haunted. And uh, man, that was a really awesome case. We did wasn't it. It was, uh, like I said, probably the top probably five cases that we've had that we've done over the years. I mean, it, it's definitely had a lot of activity in it. Um, one I'll never forget. That's for sure. Sure. So, yeah, man, that, that was that was one awesome case. I mean, all the stuff that we had, all the stuff we had happened from disembodied voices to, you know, we never well. Me and you never seen a full-bodied apparition, but we heard footsteps, we heard disembodied voices, we heard bangs, um, and Amy wound up seeing the uh, full-bodied apparition. I think that one day we were yes. there, up on top steps. There, she saw it. Scared the shit out of her too. Yeah. I mean, I heard her holler. She's like, "Ah!" I was like, "What's wrong?" She's like, "I just, see, I just seen like a six-foot figure, uh, like a black figure." She was, she was pretty. Uh, pretty wigged out about that yeah i can imagine i mean you're seeing that thing you know it's just gonna shock you you can not gonna believe what you saw yeah i mean just the, just the initial you know the visual background of the case i think you got the case didn't you uh you got it referred from somebody right yeah when yeah my with my job that i had i i deal with a lot of patients so i just happened to I have a patient that I would talk to all the time uh, about paranormal stuff. It was actually quite uh, unusual because it's not so much, normally something you do with a patient. But, uh, but yeah, I found out she's into was into this, and I started talking to her. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, come to realize that you know she was having stuff in her house, but she didn't want anybody in there to investigate. But then. I think a little bit later she had uh, said to me that she knew of somebody that was not too far from her that was having issues in her house with basically her whole family being infected by uh, a spear of some sort. So I, I told her, great. I said, I got, got her contact information. Her name was Laura. And uh, I reached out to her and was able to, you know, find out what was going on in the home. And she had multiple things going on. Her, her kids were definitely being affected. They were seeing uh random like faces that look kind of red uh, almost like they were you know angry at something you know your face gets really red um and it would literally go out out of, out of its way to scare them um there was one time i remember she said that to her her daughter come running out of the kitchen into the living room and as she was running out they could see like this like mist following her as she was coming through there uh, which was crazy, but you know, it's just stuff like that, that she was kind of talking to us about, like they would always hear things. Um, so, you know, I came out, I reached out to you. I called you up and say, Hey dude, we got this situation going on and we got with her and ended up getting our first case out of that. So, and it definitely yeah, was a doozy. Was, that was, that was a really cool case. I remember that first investigation we did and we heard that disembodied voice in the kitchen, we were just like looking at each other like, whoa, no way already. What the hell? But I mean, it was yeah. later on in the night, yeah. but it was just like, we, we, we caught a freaking full bodied apparition, man. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, and we're going yeah, to, we're going to play expect... some. Oops. Sorry about that. No, I just saying, I didn't expect much when we first got there that night. I didn't really expect to get a whole lot, if anything. Um, Cause you know, how things are sometimes. But we definitely got it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, from disembodied voices to the footsteps, uh, knocking. You know, remember we would leave the house for like an hour and let things just chill out, 
And then, you know, we would hear, you know, banging going on in the house, these loud bangs and stuff shuffling around. And, man, I mean, we, we caught a lot of stuff in that house. Over the, we did that for, investigated for about a year almost. Yeah. Yeah, because we were there at least, if I recall, five or six times, if I remember correctly, to investigate that house. And, you know, each, each time had its own uh, feeling in there. I mean, there's sometimes that, you'd have a fair amount of stuff going on. Other times it, it'd be a little less, but when we finally went in there and we can get into it later, but uh, when we had to go and actually film for the show, uh, that was definitely the most active night that we ever had when we were there. Yeah. That was so amazing too, man, because it's like, we need to get some really good video evidence. We didn't really have any video evidence. I mean, we heard footsteps going through the house that one time, uh, when we were on the second floor yeah. and we had the whole downstairs, like just plastered with cameras and, you know, it walks right by the cameras and we catch nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I watched that video about a thousand times looking for something. I mean, it walks from the front door through the dining room into the kitchen, pulls a chair out and we don't catch any of it on video, which, which sucked, you know, cause I was like, dude, we were upstairs. Remember we were like dude, footsteps. Boom, 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 you hear it go, you know, and we're like, oh, we got it, yeah. man. It's on camera, dude. We got like cameras all over the place down there, and we didn't catch jack shit on the cameras. I was like, damn, dude, we didn't get anything, nothing, not, not, not a shadow, no, nothing. I was like, damn it, that was so, yeah, that you... was so bummed. I was so bummed after that. Yeah, me too. I mean, I figured of all the places that we've we've done over the years, you, we thought we would got something from that house. But yeah, I mean, we well, didn't. we did. Though. Well, we, we did. did. We did. We did, but not like actual video. Yeah. Like more of that picture you're talking. Yeah, the picture of the game camera. Yeah, yeah. So game we got some. We got some people yeah. in the chat room tonight. Uh, South Oz, what's up, Oz? Uh, GP man. Come on, everybody. Chat. Yeah, South Oz, good guy, man. <laughs> GP man. Good to see you guys in here listening. Um, yeah, but welcome. Everybody. I did. You know, I did catch um, that when that game trail camera down in the basement. Remember, I caught that uh, that video. That well, not that you video, did. but that yep. picture of the guy holding the cat. Um, and what's yeah. cool is is that you know we did confirm with the the, the grandkids that he used to have a three legged cat. Remember, they called him Hoppy, and he used to carry it around all the time. And sure enough, we capture uh, what looks like a figure. It's really close to the game trail camera, so all you see is kind of like the side of the cat's head and his ear, and it's like someone's holding a cat, but there's no one home because, remember, they were on vacation. And remember, I had the dog at my house. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely nobody in the house at the time that happened. Yeah, there was no one there. And uh, it, it was it was amazing. I was like, this is so cool, dude. There was someone in the basement, and it was during the daytime, too. Uh because the, I think it was around four o'clock in the afternoon when we captured it on the on the game show camera, I was like, "Dude, this is cool shit." There was no one there. There's they were on vacation, but yeah, you know, we were lucky enough that it we it did get into the newspaper too at some point. Yeah, yeah, we did picture. make the newspaper and uh, made it on on Animals Planet the Haunted. That was cool, man. That was fun shooting for that. I had a good time doing that. But you know, when we were shooting, you know, our own little thing to get some trying to get some video evidence we caught some which was cool as shit you know i was like this is cool man like we had a, it was one of the most active nights we, we had ever had it was it was insane Dude, it's almost like it was meant nuts like, yeah it almost like it knew what we were there for that night and it just said okay uh maybe i'll show myself some more tonight instead you know and it just it just went crazy yeah i mean you felt that that something was besides the dog was going ape shit, looking at you, ground barking. Man, that was that was amazing, and it kind of went around the room like a like a static charge and kind of like a cold. It was weird, man. It was the weirdest thing I'd experienced. Yeah, it was a weird feeling. I mean, like I said, I mean, you did you want me to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, because um, yeah, at that point. We were, like I said, we were doing filming for the show. We were upstairs, and uh, I was up there with the camera, and I was recording the other members up there. And all of a sudden, it just—I I, got this feeling like I wasn't alone. 
like they were standing, somebody was standing beside me and all of a sudden the, the dog looks over my way and starts growling. And I knew as soon as that dog started growling at me, I'm like, I knew I wasn't going crazy. I knew I was feeling what I was feeling at that time. And next thing you know, it just almost felt like something like it's almost electrical charge was throughout my entire body enough that I had to lean over because I didn't know what was going on with me. And next thing I know, it's kind of went away a little bit and then it kind of worked. Like John said, it worked itself around the room. And by the time I got to John, like he said, it was almost like you got this cobwebby feeling. Um, but that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the dog went, absolutely ape shit he started growling and barking he even left the room he wouldn't he didn't come in the room we had to coach him back into the room remember we did yeah he did not I mean, want he to come was in there growling. and it's not like this dog like didn't know us he knew us like he was the friendliest dog you ever yeah. want to meet i mean i had him at my house you know more than once and uh he knew he knew us quite well, so it wasn't that he was growling at us. He was growling at whatever was in the house, and 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 Laura had said that he used to react to it all the time. Like he would be growling at something that you know wasn't there, and you know it, it's cool how this story starts out because you know I think Laura was the big catalyst behind a lot of the activity in the home. I think the house was haunted, but I think with her presence there it made it even more haunted, man. Like the activity was just increased with her being there. It did. And I agree with that. It, it was like insane. It was yeah, yeah, man. Because, yeah. you know, she had joined our group for a, a period of time. And uh, man, I tell you, when she was with us, we would experience really high levels of paranormal activity, which was really strange. And that was at Landon house. That was at the Frankenberger museum. I mean, dude, every place she went with us, we experienced pretty pretty high levels of paranormal activity which was really strange it was kind of like she was the the energy for it man it was weird right it yeah was weird. i mean yeah man i mean at one point you know when we we're at the frankenberger she was sitting across from me and dude i swear to god it looked like her eyes were like glowing it was weird as shit and i'm like looking at her i'm like look like uh, you know her eyes are really blue and you know mm -hmm. it's, it kind of looked like that movie dune with you know how their eyes would glow blue well, that's kind of yeah. <laughs> kind of what it looked like for a minute. I'm like looking at her. I'm like, "Hey, do like what?" I'm like, "You're freaking me out a little bit." She's like, "What?" I'm like, "Your eyes look like they're glowing." And she's like, "Huh?" I said, "Yeah, like you're kind of freaking me out a little bit. Like I'm not. I don't know what the hell's going on." But you know, I actually went outside after that. I said, "Man, I get, I'm freaking out a little bit because her eyes look like they're glowing." So I went outside, and if you remember, that's when she got touched in, yeah, in the Frankenberg. She got touched on the remember? Foot. And we got it on. Yeah, film. she got touched on the foot, and it freaked. Yeah, it freaked her out. She had to get out of get out of the house. Yeah, yeah, she jumped up and flew up out of there, man. It, it was uh, it was weird, but man, when she was around, dude, the activity was insane. And and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, we were going to do this show with Laura and Mike, but uh, she's having some issues with her children. She has uh, two small children, and uh, she couldn't make it on tonight. But we're going to carry on the show without her. And hopefully we get her back on here at, at a later date. But we are going to play a bunch of EVPs tonight from that investigation that were never aired on the uh, on the show on uh, the Haunted. And uh, a lot of them are really really good direct direct responses and disembodied voices uh, from that investigation, which you know they were they were amazing, intelligent responses. They were, yeah. I mean it. You know, I, you know, at one point I said, did you die in the house? I said, I did. You know, uh, we had a recorder in one room and you hear this voice like right in the recorder, like, leave. Like, just telling us, like, get it. They, uh, there was different things there. I think there was a lot more than, than one ghost there, your spirit or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, just because. Absolutely. Of, and yeah. I think, and I think she was bringing them in the house, not like intentionally, but I think she was, you know, attracting these things, man, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say that like they were actually get, like attracted to her in some way just because she was in that house. So who knows if it's maybe just the house or if it's some other, you know, spirits or something in the area. Who knows? But well, for some remember, reason, yeah. it definitely was multiple spirits in that house. Yeah, well, you remember the, the, the I think when we did the research on it that there was like a some kind of asylum there or something one time for kids or something or. I can't remember. It was like a hospital yeah. or something at one point. 
I remember Laura said she was seeing a little kid, a little girl, like a white dress, like like a dirty kind of white dress, old time dress. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, you know, also, I didn't even also, know. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say they also had seen a child. I think it didn't get a child get ran over by a car out front. Yeah, like a little girl. A little girl did. Yeah. 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 And she was seeing these things. She was seeing it, but check it out. I was listening to some of the the recordings, right? And, you know, back then, you know, our recording system, they kind of sucked a little bit. But, you know, as I'm going back through listening to some of the old recordings, there was a clip I had in there that said, you know, a a voice talking over Lars. Well, dude, when I played it back earlier, I was trying to clean up some of the EVPs because they're older recorders and shit that we had. So I'm going back to the recorder, and I hear a little kid's voice in there saying, I love her. It sounds like a little girl, dude. It's like, I love her. And it's talking over her. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really cool, man. I'm going to yeah. play that clip tonight. I cleaned it up a little bit, and uh, you hear a little kid like say, I love her. And it's talking oh, while she's talking. Cool. It's cool as shit. Yeah, I was like, that's the little girl oh, she yeah. was, said, said she was seeing. It was her. She was. She really was seeing it. because We captured it. There was no little kids there when we were there. You know what I mean? No. No, not that I was aware of, no. No, we That's never investigated cool, when our children were there. Their children were always gone, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we know they were going to you know, make too much noise at that time, so we had to have less contamination as possible. Yeah, everyone was gone. The dog was gone. Everybody, was, all of them were gone. Um, but, man, I'm telling you, dude, some of the stuff we... It was, it, it, was just, it was just one of these cases that... There were so many kind of coincidences that happened with the dog. I mean, even with the dog, the dog's name was Leroy. And we found out later uh, in research that there was a man that lived there, and his name was Bill. Now, Bill lived in the house for a long time. He was a a, a veteran. He was was a veteran. I believe he was in the Army. And, um, yeah, he was in the Army. And he lived in that house with with his daughter, I think his daughter, what her daughter name was, Sandra, I believe, right? Son, Sandra, yeah. Yeah. And I think they both. Sandra, they, Sandra uh, and I. I, 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 yeah, I was going to say Sandra, and, and then his his wife was named Claire, if I remember correctly, right? Yes. It was Claire, yes. I believe. Yeah. But I think Sandra and Claire died in the house. They correct? did, yeah. But Bill didn't die in the yeah, house. Yeah, I'm pretty Bill, sure they both did. Yeah, Bill didn't die in the house. Bill was forcibly removed from the house. And uh, we didn't know this, but, but, but through all of our research with the TV show and, you know, all this shit came back around and we met the grandkids, uh, which was really cool. I mean, we met this guy's family and uh, they hadn't been in the house for years. I mean, they were old when we met them. They were, they were in their fifties and sixties and they came back into the house and, um, one night we were doing an investigation and you know we had so many so many weird things that happened and they told us about all the stuff about bill and you know that he got forcibly removed from the house now this is where it gets weird his brother had him forcefully removed from the house and (laughs) he did not want to leave that house he wanted to die in that house he was sick bill had emphysema he was dying he didn't want to leave the house so there was no one there to take care of Bill. He was dying. So his brother forcibly removed him, had the hospital come. And literally, I mean, this guy left kicking and screaming. He did not want to leave the house. I think they wound up, the green kids told us they didn't want him strapping him to a bed and, and wheeling him out. I mean, it was, a re- it was really terrible. And we found out that the brother's name was Leroy. And that's what they named their dog Leroy. The people yeah. that, that lived there, the, the how. What kind of weird coincidence is that, that they named their dog Leroy? They had no idea of what was going on in that house, and they named their dog Leroy after this guy's brother. You know what I mean? And the dog yeah, I mean, was experiencing a lot the, of stuff. Hey, can you imagine the energy that was produced that day from him alone? Just from, you know, not wanting to leave there and kicking and screaming and being, like you said, forced, forced from the house. Just, just think about how his mental state was at that point and what kind of energy it possibly could have left behind in the house um, because of that. 
But yeah, then when we found out that, you know, he died actually in the nursing home, but we know for a fact that he's in that house. Oh, he yeah. Life. He came back. <laughs> <laughs> he came yes, back. He did. You know, he, yep, because he, he loved that house and there was no way in hell he was not going to go back to that house at some point. Yeah, and and the uh, the husband, uh, Laura's husband, he confirmed it. He's seen him. He's seen him, and yeah, uh, he did. <clears throat> he uh, he's seen him coming up out of the basement, and and what we found out from the grandkids was that Bill loved being in the basement. He loved working in the basement, and Brad said he was in the kitchen working, and he was like kneeled down on the floor, like working on something on the floor, and he looked up, and there's this guy coming up out of the basement and he takes one step onto the landing of the, the uh, dining room floor and he just vanishes. He said, he's gone. He said, but yeah. I seen him, man. He came up out of the stairs. He said, he stepped onto that landing. And as soon as his foot hit the landing, he just disappeared. And, you know, that was the first time they had seen a full bodied apparition in the house was then. But remember they, they were seeing, they first started seeing it. It was like a mist. They were seeing like a gray mist. Remember, like a smoky right. mist, they were saying. Yeah, and then they, and, and then they started seeing feet. It kind of gradually worked its way to seeing a full-bodied apparition. Then they started seeing feet. Then they started seeing feet to the knees. They would see the legs. And then it went to the torso. And then finally, they seen a full-bodied apparition, which was... I wish we would have seen him. We never seen him, yeah. you know? No. It would have been nice to get him, at least see him, but if we never got him got him on video, that would have been nice. So, well, at least, you know, we're not a picture, but more video-wise. But when I remember a lot of times they would say he would be down there in the uh, the basement, and he, you know, he'd always be down there tinkering around with stuff, and his old tools are still down there. He'd smoke a lot, so they still had his old cigarette butts down there. So... It, it it's definitely uh it definitely was his house and he definitely wasn't gonna go anywhere yeah i'll tell you what that one night we were down in the basement and man i just had this weird feeling that uh there was something right in my face and i turned my flashlight on and a goddamn cat was sitting on that step and scared the <laughs> shit out of me i mean that I thing was that, like yeah. two feet from my face i man i jumped back i almost pissed myself <laughs> I was like, holy shit I said, oh, my God, I almost, man. I almost <laughs> forgot about that, too. You said something. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, I was pissed myself. I clicked that oh, light on, and that cat was literally like like a foot from my face. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, dude. That was so funny. We were all laughing our ass off, and I was like, man, this creepy-ass basement. I'm getting the hell out of here, man. I went upstairs after that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Those are the good God. days. <laughs> oh my God, we had some fun times in that house. I tell you, I tell you what, oh, dude, man, did. it was a really haunted house, man. I mean, some of the stuff that they experienced. I mean, even the school bus driver seen a full body apparition, man. She, remember, uh, she was yeah, standing. In, I remember she was that. standing in the doorway, and the bus driver pulled up, picked their kids up, and like a couple of days later, the bus driver stopped and said. What is your uh, your grandfather or something there uh, living with you? She said, "No, what, no. What are you talking about?" She goes, "Well, yesterday when I picked your kid up, there was an old guy standing behind you in the door." And she goes, "What?" She's like, "Yeah, there was an old man standing behind you in the doorway, and it was Bill. <laughs> it was the guy that lived in that house. He was dead. He's been dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, what? The? She's like, that's when we knew that." The house was definitely haunted, you know, and then we started seeing started seeing him and hearing him, and uh, it was, dude, that place was freaking awesome, man. I mean, for like, I was only like, or what? We were early into investigating when we got that case. It was in 2010. I mean, we had been investigating yeah. for about four years or something like that, but it was like one of these, one of our best cases from you know early on in us investigating. Um. Yeah, because we had, did we have that one before Landon House? I think it was that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was kind of like the, the uh, no, it was the Maryland case we had, remember? Because we stopped. Oh, well, when we had Landon right. House, okay. we had Maryland at, at Westminster case, which was really cool. That's um, right. But man, we had so many great cases back then. I mean, we've had a lot of good cases now, but nothing compared to what we had 
back then, I mean, we still get a lot of good cases. We, I mean, we're still getting a lot of cases, but, uh, you know, the activity hasn't been as good as when we first started to me. I, I mean, I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah. I mean, here lately we have, I mean, we have gotten first some good houses, cases, yeah. you know, we have, we have gotten some good cases lately. Um, like the one we did in Marietta, which was really good, man. I mean, it's too bad you couldn't have been there because that place was really, really active too. I give that up there in the top yeah. ten. Yeah, that was a top tenner, man. Okay. That was a really, really good haunted house, dude. I mean, <laughs> there was nothing bad there, but dude, it was freaking haunted as shit. We had so many things yeah. that happened. The doors open, disembodied voices. I mean, I love hearing disembodied voices, and we've heard a shit ton of them since we've been doing this. Yes, we have. That we have. I remember. Quite a few. And that's what makes you keep going back. To be honest, that's, I mean, you can be dead ass tired, man. You hear a disembodied voice and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm awake now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, because, oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, we've heard of, you know, quite a bit, but, you know, it's, you don't get that on every case you go on. So once you, once you hear one in the investigation, it's just like John says, it just, just wakes you up. You're like pumped. You're ready to go the rest of the night. Hopefully, you get more. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. But all right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to play a couple EVPs and jumpstart the Halloween spirit tonight. You know what I mean? We're going to jumpstart it and Ooh. play a couple <laughs> cool ass disembodied voices and EVPs that we captured in a haunting in Duncannon. So. Get ready, folks. I'm going to play one here. Um, this was one where Dom was kind of getting aggravated with uh, the ghost. I think this was our first investigation there. And uh, we got into the middle of the night and we really hadn't had anything happen. Uh, it was the first case, the first investigation we, we did. Didn't really have much happening. And Don's like, screw this, man. He just <laughs> got fed up. He's like, yeah, I do anything all goddamn night or something like that. He said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, lo and yeah. behold, uh, we caught a uh, a response, a disembodied voice. I mean, it it right on cue. So get your headphones out if you're gonna uh, listen to these uh, EVPs. You should be able to hear it quite well. So here we go. This is Don kind of getting a little shitty with the ghost <laughs> in the house and giving a response. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. M memories. <laughs> <laughs> So here we go, folks. <laughs> so what, now you're not going to do anything for us? You're just going to be all quiet all night and not do a damn thing? Did you hear that? That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to play that again. Uh, all right, we're going to play that again. So what, now you're not going to do anything for us? You're just going to be all quiet all night and not do a damn thing? That is a loud-ass disembodied voice, dude. It is. That was really it's loud. I mean, it, was like, it, just, it just amazes me. It was like, uh, nah, nah, or something like that. <laughs> it was loud. Yeah. It was you really loud. You can tell I pissed her off. Yeah, I was like, nah, no. Nah. I'm like, what the hell? I had to cut out the cussing part because we were cussing a little bit. We were like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. man. We normally do it at most of our cases. <laughs> yeah, um, there was there was a time uh, when Laura was experiencing this weird phenomenon with her front door. And uh, the, door, the, the door had a glass transom, a really old, it was an old house, but it had a, tr a glass transom with a wood panel with the glass in it and it would open up on its own and uh she would tell us she would come down in the morning and it would be open it'd be like dead of winter and that thing would would be open and no one opened it because it was kind of hard to open anyway remember it was on that old piece of shit rod that was kind of broken remember that rod that was beside yeah, was. the door That's... and it was busted yeah and she would come down and that thing would be open so <clears throat> laura decided to investigate it investigate with us one night and uh, she asked a question, you know, were, were you the one that pushed open the transom opener? And and uh, we called a response. So I'm going to let you guys hear this. Here we go. Was it you that pushed the transom opener up? 
I'll play that one more time. Was it you that pushed the transom opener up? You definitely hear that whispery man's voice say, I did. Can you hear it, Don? I can hear it, and I can hear that noisy refrigerator again. <laughs> yeah, that thing was a lousy, <laughs> noisy piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing was a buzzy thing. Yeah, I like, I, eh. But I tell you what, I think it contributed to a lot of the EVPs. It helped. It helped it. You know what I mean? Like talk. It did. It, it may have been annoying, but I do agree. I, I do believe it helped out, especially in that one clip. Yeah, because remember how much EMF that thing was throwing out? I mean, it was going off the charts. Yeah, it was. Um, and you can tell just by, because the way that compressor was running back there, you know, I'm not sure how old that, that refrigerator was, but it was definitely putting off the EMF for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll play that clip one more time. Let's guys here play it maybe once or twice more. Here we go. Was it you that pushed the transom opener up? Was it you that pushed the transom opener up? Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. I said I did. And um this next clip, uh, I believe I hear I, I hear a disembodied voice, a female. No one else heard it, but I heard it. And um we were like, I was like, Did anybody hear that voice? And they're like, No, no, I didn't hear it, but I think I heard it. And I respond to it. I'm gonna play that clip right now. Yeah, it was right. It was like real whispery. It's right. It's kind of yeah, mixed yeah. in with movement. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I'll play it one more time here. I don't, this is not a really good one. That was the one that said, I love it sounds her. Like she said, it says, yeah, I, I love her. Towards the end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right after that the, was, you can hear the was, floor creaking and, and then you yeah, hear. It. Yep. That was Laura talking. And then you hear a voice over her. It's like, I love her. I'll play it again. Yeah. You hear that? I love her. Once you hear, once you, you, someone tells you what it is, you can really make it out. You know what I mean? Like you hear, I love her. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, This is the one I think I heard the female voice. This next clip. I'll play this next voice. I hear a female voice. I don't think anybody else heard it, but I, I wind up hearing it. So here we go. Did somebody say something? No. no. I just heard a female voice, dude. Straight no, up. Uh, 10 to 1. I heard a female, man. No, no female said anything? No. Yeah, did you hear that? Like, kind of, it kind of almost like. It's right after that car drove by. That's yep. That's when I heard it. Yep. That's where it, it was. was. Yep. yep. I'm going to play that clip again. Did somebody say something? No. I just heard a female voice, dude. Straight up. Uh, 10 to 1. I heard a female, man. No, no female said anything? No. Wow. Yeah, that was cool, man. That was a really good clip. I definitely heard it. Yeah. You can tell. You can hear it at the end there. Yeah, yeah. So the car had anything to do with it, like like it was given the it the sound it needed. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Like, like it was yeah, female, like, like sound with the sound wave. Yeah, I think it did. I think like a lot of uh, ambient noises, they can use that ambient noise to uh, create vocalizations. I think so. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many I cases did. have we had where we've made noise like just our jacket moving, and all of a sudden you hear get out. You know, when you're moving your jacket or something like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, it happens quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, have there's something to be able to be able to do that. 
Yeah, there's another clip in here. Remember that her daughter Haley? Her name was Haley. Um, it, it said her name a couple times in there in that house when uh, there was no one there. Um, <clears throat> I think one time a car goes there's by, it. and the it kind of uses the car to say her name. It's like when, when the car goes by, you hear this Haley. Like it's really cool, yeah. man. Like. The stuff that that was happening in there was, you know, phenomenal. Like voice wise, like EVP wise, disembodied voices. Um, you, you don't get that in a whole lot of places. When you do get it, it's it's really amazing. I mean, if you hear a disembodied voice, I mean, it's just amazing in itself. You know. Oh, I know it is for me. I get super excited when I hear that. Hell yeah, man! That's because what you're there you know, for, man. I don't like using apps and shit. I just don't like using them because it's not, you know, it's a, you're using a Frank's box or a ghost box or the, what's it, the SB7 or, you know, people are using these stupid phone apps now. Those phone apps are shit, man. I don't know why people use them. They're, they're, they don't work, man. Like people, oh, they, they work. They do not work. We had a, we had a tech guy on here, right on here saying that the shit doesn't work and people still use it. Trying to inform people, you know, if you're gonna do them paranormal investigations, do the shit right. You're 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 playing with right. people's lives, man. Like this shit is important. This isn't this isn't a game. These are people's lives that you're you're uh, affecting. You know, you're going into an, a house to investigate, and you know you're using some stupid phone app that has a SLS that's really not an SLS camera system on your phone, and it's mapping out figures, and you're sitting there telling them that they got. You know, 10, 11 ghosts in the house because you mapped out 10 figures. You're an idiot. You're a total idiot to do shit like that. I mean, that's dumb. You know, that's just not even being responsible whatsoever. I mean, dude, I, I would never do that ever. Not a million. Like, not, we've made a lot of mistakes over the years, but we learned from it, you know? Yeah, we have. I mean, you do it, you figure that out over the years. You know stuff that you, you do wrong and you correct it the best you can um and that's what you got to do you got to make sure that like you're saying you don't want to go in here and give them all these this false information that is not helping the situation that they're in you know you got to make sure that you're presenting them with clear evidence at least something that so you can figure out what is going on in that house yeah man i mean you can't go in there and, and especially if people have children, uh, you go in there and say they got, you know, because someone got scratched that automatically is demonic or you, you heard three knocks on something, you know, something responded with three knocks. Oh, that's demonic. Why? Because a movie said that a movie, a movie yeah. said that three scratches is demonic. Three knocks is demonic. That's crazy. That's a movie. This isn't freaking real. This is not real life. That's a movie. You're dealing with you're dealing with people, clients like we've dealt with. Dude, you got to give them the right shit. You can't. They got kids. You, you know they don't. A lot of yep. people don't have money to go just up abandon the house and leave it because there's something paranormal going on. You tell them something's demonic in there. Now you just opened a whole new bag of worms, man. You know now you got these people are freaking out because they think there's a demon in their house. You know you got to be more responsible than that. As an investigator, you if do. you want to do this shit to be serious, you know, if this is just some joyride you're out there trying to do, then maybe you just go to these these pay places and you know, and you do that kind of shit, you know, go to you know Waverly mm -hmm. Hills or, you know, we're going to go to Fort Mifflin. We do that for fun. It, that's just for fun. Right. You know, this is you know when we're dealing with a client, this shit is serious. This is not. Uh, go out in the dark and provoke shit, and you know or. Yeah, you know, we got scratched. There's a possible possession going on here, you know. Or, I, you know, I, it's just so much bullshit out here that people are trying to do to create money and generate money, or, or try to be on a TV show, or try to be famous, dude. If you're trying to do that shit, like I said before, you're in it for all the wrong reasons. All the wrong reasons. You, if you're faking like you're being possessed and. I mean, dude, come on, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta come at you gotta come come at it better than that, you know. Yeah, you gotta act professional when you're in a client's home. 
can't be like, doing that silly stuff. Yeah, I mean, standing up provoking in somebody's house and, you know, uh, this is in Ghost Adventures, man. You know what I mean? Like, cut your shit. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I don't, that's why I, I'm not dealing with other paranormal groups anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm just staying away from them, you know. I don't mind working with people, but, man, goddamn, dude. Come on. You know what I mean? Yep. Let's get real here. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Holy shit. No one has the answers to this shit. And people that say they do, they're full of shit. And they, they are. They are. You know what I mean? Look how long we we've don't been have doing an answer. We still, we still barely have any answers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's the we know the phenomena's there for sure. We've experienced it. We've heard it. We've seen it. You know, but do I have an answer for it? Absolutely not. And no, no one does. And I, I get tired of hearing these people talking about they got the answers. They're going to get rid of this shit. They're going to get rid of that with this. I'm going to take this sage and blow some smoke once in a while. I'm going to get rid of it. You're full of shit. <laughs> you're full of shit. And I'll tell you yeah. in your face, you're full of shit. I don't care who you are. You're not going to get rid of these things if they don't want to go. And that's the bottom line. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, well, you can get rid of them because you blew some smoke around. Some sage or threw salt on the ground, you know, or uh, get, I got Teresa Caputo coming. She's going to get rid of them too. Get the, come on, man. Get real, dude. We have no explanation. We have no explanation behind this shit. I can't tell you on any of these voices that I've heard why they happen. I mean, we're, we're definitely reaching out to something and communicating with something in the dark. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're in the dark. We're sitting in the dark talking to something we can't see and it's responding intelligently. Uh, but what is it? Is it really this person that died? I think it, I believe it was, I, you know, but. Especially in the, especially in this case. Yes. Yeah. I, I definitely believe, this but I, case. I definitely believe that he was in the house. His daughter was in the house and his wife, they were all still there. They responded intelligently yeah. to answers. If, if it was them, you know what I mean? I, I want to think it's them. I don't have really hard validation it was them i mean we have responses um but you know trying to figure this shit out is really hard it's really hard yeah i, I don't have an answer to it I, and all the years we've been doing it you know i have more questions than answers i do believe that there are people that create no. the phenomena you know what i mean i agree with you on that yeah yep there are people that create the yep. phenomena see, they- there's yeah, they're conduits. They basically they'll help to increase the activity in the house. Yeah, they're they'll like a magnet. They're yeah, they're like some kind of magnet yeah. to the phenomena, dude, and it, and it increases it by a lot. Uh, like I said, like like Laura, dude, she's she's a catalyst to this shit. Like it's just like when she's when she's there, activity increases. Yeah, because whenever yeah. The, whenever they were off that entire week, we really didn't get a whole lot that time, if I remember correctly. Like we didn't yeah. get a whole lot when they weren't there, but when they were when they were home, things definitely increased. Yes, Osman said it could be like a split personality between souls and stuff like that. It could be. Who the hell knows? You know what I mean? Like we have no idea. I know a lot of things that happened in that house corresponded to the owner that lived there. And the weird things that happened mm-hmm. were all corresponding to like them naming their dog Leroy and the former owner that lived there, his brother's name was Leroy and him and his brother didn't get along. It was, it was just how it was. And, and Leroy was affected by what was in the house himself, the dog, you know? So. Yeah. And, yeah. and I know that there's some people out there, there's some people out there that would say, Oh, well, these are demons. Demons are, pretending to be people that they aren't, you know? Yeah, well, the Where's Bible the says that? that. Well, the Bible says that, you know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But that's a whole other subject. Yeah, I mean, that's stuff you can really get deep into with the Bible. I mean, that's all. Uh, <laughs> I, don't I, mean, even, I don't even want to get started with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a whole new... Uh, that's a whole new episode right there. We could talk on about 10 episodes with that. But um, I mean, yeah, I do really. believe, I do believe in God. I do believe there's some kind of higher power, you would say. Um, 
I just, you really sit down and think about yourself, right? Like, mm -hmm. you, you, you're thinking, you know, everything you do, it's not your mind doing it. It's you telling your mind to do it. Your body's like a machine. You know what I mean? And your your soul is controlling the machine. It's controlling your brain. It's telling your brain, I want to grab this cup and I want to drink this water. You know what I mean? I'm not, my brain's not telling me to do that. I'm telling my brain to grab this cup and drink it. You know what I mean? It's not my brain. It's my soul telling, you know, it's like the soul is guiding the machine, you know? It's like right. driving a car. You're telling the car what to do. You're you're controlling the car. It's the same thing. You know? It is. It's the exact same thing. And I love it when Do you have that do you have do you have that clip where we're in the um out in the kitchen? Um let me scroll through here real quick. Because <clears throat> that's a prime that'd be a prime example of that. Um, footsteps. That's the footsteps. Yeah, I got that clip. It says yeah, right? There's one that says yes or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I want to play this clip. Yes. We heard a disembodied yes. voice in the kitchen. Um, you can go ahead, Don. You remember you remember what happened uh, in there? Yeah. Yeah, basically we were John and I were in the, the kitchen and we were sitting there in the kitchen table and and of course you're gonna hear the noisy refrigerator again. But um, yeah, I basically just asked, you know, because we know that Sandra was one of the ladies that had died in the house. So I suggest, I suggest, well, I said, Sandra, if you're here with us, can you please let us know? And we get a yes response or a yeah. So, and you'll hear it over top of the refrigerator. All right, I'll play that clip right now. Sandra, if you're here, let us know. that oh, no. did you hear that yeah sounded like yes didn't it yeah that definitely said yeah it's like yeah it's a yeah or yes or something yep i'm gonna I play that yes. uh, that's just i'm gonna play that clip again Sandra, if you're here let us know That. Yeah. Oh, no. Did you hear that? Yeah. Sounded like yes, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. It was definitely, definitely cool. Yeah. Definitely sounds to me like it's saying yes at the end. Yeah, yeah. It's like a whispery. Like, like she's yes. saying yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was really cool. And that was definitely she's using that I Yeah, and you can tell she's using that refrigerator to help her talk. It's just another form yeah, that of sound wave that she'd be able to communicate with that refrigerator was so loud it was so, it was annoying as hell it really was and i know it's, i think at times we yeah we did we did unplug that refrigerator i think once or twice before and i don't think we really got much when we did that um but then every once in a while when we plug it back in then then we would get some things yeah yeah but here, I got a, I caught a voice to that uh, said their daughter's name. Remember, uh, her name was Haley. I'm gonna play that clip. Haley, so you're yeah. gonna hear this. You're gonna hear this voice say Haley. You hear that, man? That's like stretched out too. It's like Haley. Kind of creepy, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of creepy. I'm going to play that again. Yeah, that uh, definitely sounds like it says Haley to me. Do you have, there was another clip that we caught that had Haley in it. Do you, do you have that one too? 
Uh, I think I have that one. Sure, I do. It's like it's it's really clear. I mean, you can't. There's no mistake in it. Saint Haley. I'll uh, see. This one, I think. This is the one that says leave. We have one that said leave, like really clear in the record. It's like leave. I think this is it. Mm -hmm. Let me play this one here. Yeah, that was it, dude. Did you hear that? That was cool as shit. Yeah. Definitely says leave. Yeah, that was in that was I had that recorder in the daughter's room and we were in that library they had they had. And uh I'm gonna play that clip again. Yeah, that was a really good clip, man. I mean, it's like right in the recorder. Leave. And it's definitely clear. You said that was up in the uh, second floor. Yeah, that was in the was. daughter. That was in the daughter's room. We had no. The recorder was in the daughter's room. You hear us talking, but we're in the in that library that was across the hall. Everybody had that little library that okay. they had, that little sitting room. Yeah. Well, yep. that's that's where we were, and the recorder was in the daughter's room, and it's like something says it right in the recorder. It was really cool. So this thing like to respond to um, to Laura a lot, and um, she asked a bunch of questions, and it responded to her like right away. And this is one of the questions. She says like, uh, "Are you trying to let me know you're here?" And it responds, "Oh, I'll, uh, I'll play that clip now." You're trying to let me know that you're here. Oh, yeah, that says yes, like really clear a man's voice. So yes. Yeah. 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 I'll play that clip again. You're trying to let me know that you're here. Yeah, that was really cool, man. Yeah, it was. Cool. That was such a great case. I have so many more EVPs. I'm going to play some more. Um, but yeah. I missed that place. Oh my God! I, I, you stopped there not too long ago, right? I did. I stopped there and talked to the current owners and asked them if they had anything else going on. And the dad or the uh, dad that was there, he he said no. But then the, the grandmother, she was said, "Well, yeah, I think we do have a friend here." So who knows? It's got, I mean, I know there's definitely activity in the house. I think a lot of times people tend to shut it off, ignore it. You know, they're not really paying attention to it. And some people aren't open to it as, as much as like Laura was. Yeah, I, like I said, I definitely think that she was like uh, a magnifier to it. I mean, she would, when she was there, we had a lot of activity happen when she was with us. Um, yeah. And even I, when we were filming. And I can guarantee 100, yep, I guarantee 100% if we, if somehow I would able to get back in there, that we would get evidence out of there. 100%. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, like I was just saying, she was like a like a tuning fork to it, man. Like, she would tune into it, man, and it would it would be nuts the stuff that we would have, ha you know, would happen to her and it happened to her, it happened to us. I mean, you just don't get a whole lot of people. Like when certain people are with you, and you go into a haunted location, man, it the activity goes absolutely nuts. You know, I mean, you you get a lot of stuff. Yeah. You yeah. Do. Yeah. Like like uh yeah, frequency hertz levels, frequencies hurt yeah, Oz. Yeah, like we a lot of these sometimes you know, we get a lot of these EVPs and they're on a hertz level that you can't really hear with the naked ear, with the human ear. You know, they're below twenty hertz. So, you know, you're you're looking at it on a spectrogram and it comes in and you hear the voice, but it's so low that it's not even registering on a spectrogram on your on your audio software. You're like Holy shit, this isn't even registering on there. You know, you're like, what the hell? 
And then you start pumping it up, you know, amplifying it. And sometimes when you amplify it, just amplifying it drowns it out. Like you hear it, but then when you go to amplify it, it's like totally drowned out. You're like, damn, because all the ambient noise around it just drowns it out. But you know it's there, but it's really low, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, we didn't have to worry about that in that case because we experienced so many uh, EVPs and disembodied voices that were loud. They were really loud and intelligently answering, you know? Yeah, well, I know we had that when I was talking about earlier, but earlier when we were upstairs in the bedroom and, you know, the dog was reacting to me, um, we decided to go in another room and we heard that this embodied voice come out of that little small room in the hallway. Do you have that vi- audio? I have that on video. Remember, we captured that on video. Oh, okay. We captured that on a video okay, camera. Cause I, cause, okay, because I think I was, I think I was recording at that time. Because I have that, I have that audio. Yeah, I, I have it, but it's yeah, on video. But once we were walk, once we were walking by there, uh, shortly after it happened to me, you could hear this disembodied voice say, "Hey," just like out loud. Oh yeah, and I heard it. Like, as soon as I, as soon, and as soon as I passed that doorway. It's when it did it, and all three of us heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Laura heard it. And you heard it. I'm like, dude, yeah, I heard it. It was loud. Because I was like, man, that was loud. You hear me on the video. I'm like, that was loud. If you listen, you know, on the video, you can hear it really clear. When you walk by that that little library, you hear this voice like coming out of that room. It's like, hey. You're like, dude, did you hear that? I'm like, hell yeah, I heard it. I said, that was loud. But remember one time we uh, we had a couple... um, People that I think they had seen, I think they had seen the show. No, they, they just wanted to come on an investigation. They've never done it before. I think it was like a husband and wife, and they came with us. And uh, remember, we heard the yeah, footsteps downstairs. That. We heard the footsteps. Yeah, I remember that. We were all upstairs. Yeah. yeah, well, I got that clip on here. I'm going to play that clip right now. So this was a clip. We, we were okay. upstairs up in uh, Lars' bedroom, and uh, we heard what. Definitely were footsteps come from the front door, walked through the, the house wasn't very big. So, I mean, it just went from the front door to the living room, to the kitchen area. And you hear these really pronounced footsteps. They sound like somebody with boots on. It's like, boom, boom, boom. I mean, it's, it's trucking. That's the first time I'd ever heard footsteps in the house. And that was cool. So I'm going to play that clip right now. Did you hear that? Dude, I heard that. they were footsteps. Where? Downstairs. It sounded like a lot of shuffling in the kitchen, like right below us. Dude, that was footsteps like shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was footsteps <laughs> like shit, man. Like that was shit, definitely. <laughs> oh, the good God. old days. <laughs> yeah. That was great. I'm going to play that clip again. You got to really listen for the host. I was going to amplify it today, but I was like, eh, might get a little too loud. So I might distort it. So I just left the clip the way it was. So here we go. Whoa. Did you hear that? Dude, heard that. they were footsteps. Where? Downstairs. It sounded like a lot of shuffling in the kitchen, like right below us. Dude, that was footsteps like shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. That was a good clip, there, man. That was big footsteps were loud, man. They they were. It it was louder than what your recording was is picking up because I remember we were all like, you could hear it downstairs. We we're just amazed that we heard that that night. Yeah, as we um, Ob says he has a uh, abduction video. Um, might be able to send that through. Um, what the hell is that? Uh, we transfer, I think. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I think it, you can download big files through like we, we transfer. I believe that's what it's called. I used it for uh, another podcast. Yeah, I think yeah, if you go through we transfer Oz. I think we can uh, we can be able to listen to it that way. Um, 
but yeah, uh, this is there's another EVP we caught in the dining room. I think I asked, did you die in this house? And it says, uh, I did. So I'm going to play that clip for you guys right now. So here we go. Did you die in this house? Yeah, I definitely said I did. I'm going to play that clip again. Yeah. Sound of female, too. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to play that again. Did you die in this house? You had to amplify that a little bit, but yeah, it definitely... Uh... Definitely said I did. There sound like there sound like there was a little bit of something in the beginning before it said I did too. Yeah, like like that? a like a female, right? Like talking, yeah, like, like it was trying the, to. Yeah, it was saying something, but yeah. you can't make it out. It's really low. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, I thought I was, I thought I was hearing it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's in in between like some movement, like you hear like a female talking. Like really low, it's kind of mixed in, you know. They do that shit a lot, you know. You'll be talking, and next thing they'll they'll try to they'll cut in on your. I guess they use your your voice. You know what I mean? I mean that that was a case where I believe something uh, mimicked your voice and mine was in that house, right? Didn't something mimic your voice in that house? I know. I think it was that house. I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. It might have been. We've had it happen so many times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, did it, it did it at Franklin House Tavern because that one voice where it says, that's me, that sounds like you. And yeah. you're like, you hear a voice say, that's me. And it, it sounds like you. And then you're like, what the hell was that? And everybody's like, I don't know, Carl. Oh, yeah, it, it came from behind me. And you weren't nowhere near Carl. Yeah, because what? Yeah, because whenever I had uh, listened to that on Fox 43... Right when they were on, when those guys yeah. were on there, yep. When you they they played it on, they played on there, and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely me, and you can hear it. Yeah, it sounds and just it, like it you. Steps, it sounds ex- it sounds exactly like me. Yeah, but it wasn't you. <laughs> right, and and I know we had it happen in the Maryland house, and I don't remember if it happened at Laura's or not. I, it did. Honest. I think it, it. I think it. Um, I think it. It used my voice. Is this something about Jesus or something? Well, that's that, that's that's right. Yeah. Now it was upstairs because I remember yeah, like, recording about said, yes. Yeah. It said like Jesus, you're not or something like that. I'm like talking. Yep. You're fact, talking to me, and it's like you hear this, this voice say Jesus, you're not, and it sounds like me, but it's yep, not I me. I have that. Yeah. Because you're like, dude, is that you? And I'm like, do you have that? No, no, it's not me. Do you I have that do, clip or no? I do have that clip. Somewhere. Oh, good. Yeah. I don't, I don't I think I have it on here, though, but I do have it. Oh. <laughs> I'm almost certain I have it. But back then, we were going to use That's because that. Go ahead. That... Oh, I was just going to say, no, I know that's another good one. That's another clear one. Yeah, yeah. This is a, um, I caught another, uh, this one was a voice, Amy was with us. And, uh. We hear a breath or something in the dining room, I think it was. It was a dining room. Yeah. I'm going to play that clip. Me and Amy hear it. I don't know anybody else hears it, but me and her hear it. I'm going to play that clip for you guys real quick. Energy in here that you can do it. What was that? Was that one of you guys? Nobody heard it. Did you hear it, Amy? The one he's yawning or anything? I thought I heard something, but I wasn't sure. Oh, dude, that was that was something. It was like breathing. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't move. I thought it was. Did you breathe? No, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, did you hear it? It was breathy, like. I heard it. It's, yeah. It Sally was saying something. They can't really make it out very well, but it says something. I'm gonna play that clip again. Energy in here that you can do it. What 
Was that one of you guys? Nobody heard it. Did you hear it, Amy? Yes, I did. The one of you yawn or anything? I thought I heard something, but I wasn't sure. Oh, dude, that was that was something. It was like breathing. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't move. I thought it was. Did breathing. you, Brad? Uh, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, that was a really good clip, Bob. It's glad someone else heard it beside me because I'm always, I'm always the one to hear shit. And nobody <laughs> else ever hears it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's normally the case. Yep, yep, yeah, you're right, Oz. Two times, yep. Yeah, it's just like it's, it's something is trying to say something, but it can't get it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've happened. We've had that happen before. You know, in certain cases where, well, what was it? Where was that at the? A case where we just on not too long ago we had the same thing where you, you could tell it was trying to talk but it was it was struggling yeah Charles yeah. was but it, it was at that uh that uh farmhouse farmhouse oh. yeah but i'm trying to remember where it was but yeah but no no you know where it was it was at in minersville that's where it was remember we were yeah, hearing like yeah we we're hearing like he was trying to like say, say okay. shit, but we couldn't we couldn't get it, you know what I mean? We're like, what the hell is it saying? Like, it's trying to talk, but we can't get it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like it was having definitely having difficulties that night trying to talk, but you know, we don't know how it is, you know, on the other side where you know how they're even able to do it anyhow. So I can imagine it's something you have to work up and be able to get practice at and do. Yeah, oh hell yeah. I mean I remember that that one case, um I remember that one we did it was in Harrisburg with the girl from the military. Good point. Um Yeah. I'm trying to remember her name. Christine. Wasn't that her name? Christina or I think something like that. But I know who you were talking about, yeah. Dude, that was that was a really weird case too. Like she was, uh, it was some kind of catalyst or something for that too. Yeah, because all the stuff that she was going on, had going on in the house. And we've had other people like that too. That we've we felt that when we got to the house, you could tell that they were a catalyst and they were it was attracted to the the client more so, or sometimes the client with themselves was creating it. Yeah. I'm going to play that clip from her. Um, remember, that, remember that clip I caught? We were in the bedroom, and I, I click on the handheld. And we didn't hear it at the time, but when I got home, I heard that, that voice say, I'm the devil or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. I'm the devil. Yeah, it says, I'm the devil. And she was afraid of the devil. She always said she was, like, afraid of the demons and the devil. And, and sure enough, we get a voice that says that. So I'm going to play that clip right now. This is a really good clip. So if they want to make con you hear that that is a good clip yeah that's <laughs> that really cool says, i'm the devil dude <laughs> that says i'm the devil <laughs> like clear ah, I'm the yeah. devil. that shit is freaky yeah you, can't. you know that is freaky it's, it's freaking Satan himself talking to you right there <laughs> yeah that's that's the devil himself right there it's, i am the devil i'm gonna play that again i'm gonna play it a couple times So if they want to make con So if they want to make con Boy, creepy. Eight to nine. <laughs> creepy. That is creepy. Good one for Halloween. Hell yeah. <laughs> Bringing in Halloween with I'm the devil. Dude, she was afraid of that go. shit too, man, because she was like really, really like I'm afraid of demons and the devil. She was really a really religious person too, and she was a uh, um, yeah, she was in the army and stuff. So this thing would follow her to to like drill and shit. Like it would it would follow her. That's crazy, man. Yeah, because I remember yeah. some of the other people that she was around. They were experiencing stuff too with her. Yeah, yeah. They people, were seeing it. Yeah, other soldiers were experiencing the phenomenon. Yeah. They were coming out. Or like the shower and the towels would be like pulled straight out, like someone was holding them out, and there was there was no one there, dude. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yeah, 
That'd be a weird thing to see. What? You come out of the shower, your towel's like towels pulled off the rack like someone's holding it out there. I'd shit myself. I'd be going to bed to go downstairs yeah, and get in the get, bathroom. You're afraid you get whipped in the ass, then you're in trouble. Then you'd be yeah, running like, out of there. <laughs> yeah, is this is this gonna uh, whoop me on my ass or what? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> Ah, uh, man, I tell you, I wish Laura yeah. would have came on. Um, I know. I was hoping to get her talking about a lot of the stuff that she had. But, yeah, like, Oz, there was you a lot more things. The, yeah, because, Oz, you were talking about those breathing issues. I know one thing that I remember she had stated that they would uh, hear a lot of coughing in there that we assume was from Bill because he smoked so much. Yeah, I remember he was saying they was hearing, uh, I think Brad was saying that they were hearing like a raspy kind of like cough, like a smoker's cough. Yeah. Yep. That was crazy, dude. That that was one creepy, creepy place, though. If you if you was in there by yourself, you would probably definitely feel creeped out a little bit. I did, because I know there was a couple times I went there by myself, and you just, every time you turn around, you're like looking over your shoulder and expect to see something standing there yeah i mean uh i don't know man it was just when you were in there by yourself you definitely felt like there was something watching you you know what i mean yeah you definitely didn't feel yeah, they like have stairs alone you didn't feel like you were alone yeah, they actually you know had I mean? they oh i know yeah as they had uh stairs going upstairs and also the basement But that's a lot of time where Amy's Amy had seen the full body apparition was upstairs on the second floor uh, stairway. Yeah, I just remember that her yelling that day. She was shocked. <laughs> she screamed. She's like, ah! I was like, hey, what's wrong? She's like, <laughs> yeah. I just seen him. I just seen him. She was freaking out a little bit, but she did yell. She screamed. Said, what the she hell? Did, she was, like, that what really scared me. <laughs> yeah, she's like that really scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> She said, all the times I've been here and I've never experienced anything like that. I said, like, yeah, well, you've seen it now. I said, I wish I would have seen his ass. I didn't get to see him. Shit. I know. We all get <laughs> miss out. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what the hell? I miss him. That sucks. Why is everybody else seeing him? We we can't see him. Come on. I know, right? I was like, what the hell? Dude? You can hear him. Just can't see him. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna play some uh, some other clips from, but but that basically, I got some more clips I'm gonna play um, from the from the uh, York Emporium and stuff like that where we we uh, investigated before, but uh, that case would came around to us like 360 degrees, man. Like it started out as just like yeah, the house is is haunted. Then we got into the research of it and we started doing the show, and then we met the the, the family. That you know, this man's family and his grandkids, and they told us about Bill. And they explained to us about how Bill was a disciplinarian. He was, you know, a serviceman, and he didn't have like a whole lot of bullshit in his house. Like the kids had to play outside; they couldn't play inside. He was real strict. He was a disciplinarian, and you know, it was just great to have these people that you know they hadn't been in their house since their grandfather had died, and they, now they were old. You know what I mean? Right. They were all yeah. old. They were old now. You know, their grandfather had been dead for, for years. And, uh, you know, they were, they got really emotional. Remember they got really emotional and, you know, they were, they were crying and stuff like that. And it was, it was really, really cool. Not that they were crying, but it was cool to hear their story. And now it's all falling into the place with the haunting. You know what I mean? What's going on in the house yeah. and what they're experiencing. Now we know for sure that the mother, their mother is there, their grandfather's there, their grandmother's there. And, you know, it's all fall, it's all falling into that bucket. You know, okay, here it is. Boom. Now we know this is the guy. He's here. The the wife is here. The daughter's here. And uh, it, it, it just, it was just one of those cases that you don't have happen a lot. No, and it's one of those cases to me where I felt like, you know, we've talked about it in the past, where 
it had a beginning and an ending. You know, like you were saying, the family members came back. They were able to kind of uh, relive the history that they've had there. And and I guess in some strange way, kind of say goodbye. Because uh, I'm guaranteed that was the last time they were in there. Um, but it, it just it just had that special moment, at least to me, you know, where I felt like it just it had some form of completion. Yeah, I definitely think it had it had an ending to it. And most hauntings don't have an ending. You know, we go into these cases and, you know, they're still having a whole lot of activity long after we're gone. And we try to investigate it for as long as we can just to try to come up with an answer because, I mean, even your research will take you to a dead end a lot. You know what I mean? Even when you're researching, it should take you to a dead end. And you're just like, what the hell else is here? There's something missing. You know what I mean? It's like you got to find the clues. And uh, we got some pretty good researchers now with Nick and and Tom. And, uh, Tom's girlfriend is a librarian, so she, she likes to help out once in a while. But you know, it's getting into the history of it and research is important. It really is. If you're trying to find an answer to something, you know what I mean. Sometimes there is no answer. Oh yeah. You know, but yeah, but at least times, this was. But at least this way. Yeah, but at least this way you have something to go by when you go into the house. You know, you know people that may have passed away in there. Uh, so you can, you know, at least go in, ask ask questions, and maybe try to get that particular person or spirit to respond. Hopefully say their name um, and kind of go, go from there. But that's it, it's, it's, it definitely helps no matter what case you're at. Yeah. Yeah, it does. If you get a chance, if, if all the listeners out here listening to the show, and we appreciate you listening to the show, uh, we've, uh, you know, I get to see uh, who listens to the show, and we've had listeners all over the world, which is awesome. I mean, Oz, you know, we've got people from Australia, uh, man, India, Great Britain, Ireland, uh, Canada. I mean, we have so many listeners, man. It's awesome. And, you know, we really like getting getting this stuff out to the world about what we've experienced. You know what I mean? And it's just a drop in the bucket of what other people have experienced. But we've experienced a lot of stuff. And I'm sure a lot of other people have too. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's just, you know, if you get a chance to watch the show, definitely go to, it's on Netflix. You can go to The Haunted and look for the episode of Bloody Man. It's a really, really cool show. Um, just because it comes back full circle, you know, it, they don't play a lot of our evidence on there, which kind of sucks, but you know, it's, it's television. So, you know, it's, I mean, we filmed a lot of hours of, of stuff there and uh, just a few short things made it on the show, but we did experience a lot of stuff there. And uh, it was amazing to do that episode for animal planet. That was the first time we were ever on television. And, um, we thought it was pretty awesome. We had fun. I know I had fun. What about you? Yeah, it was. I, I enjoyed myself. Oh, I definitely enjoyed myself. Good. I mean, yes, it was a little nervous at, at first, but, you know, I had, I really enjoyed it because it's an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, it's def- it was awesome, man. I, it, that was just one of the cases. Like I said, there was, if you get a chance, people listen to it. Uh, go, go. That go to Netflix, download it, and check it out. I mean, we don't get it; we don't get any money from it. But you know, just to you know, you're hearing our voices on the radio. You get to see us on there and see what kind of stuff we experience and meet the the homeowners like we do. And uh, and you'll see the uh, the grandchildren of this man that passed away, and they show pictures of Bill and his wife and uh, the the daughter, and uh, it, it's just it's a pretty amazing thing stuff like this happens it uh it touches your heart a little bit because you you know you're not you're not prepared for something to come around like that you know what i mean like we've done a lot of cases yeah. and, and they've I never know. they've they, they hit a dead end a lot like you go to places and you're like man what the hell like well yeah. i can't, I can't I figure out why this like is that. here yeah like, it give you some kind of answer you know what i mean like Give me an answer to why why this thing's here. Why is it here? Why why is it you know? Just give me something, some kind of clue. 
of what the hell is going on. So like the Marietta case, we pretty much got to the bottom of that one too, which was, you, you weren't in on that one, but um, man, dude, we definitely found out that who was haunting the place. And, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of people that were seeing the, the guy in the house and dude, he was an Amish guy. <laughs> he was Amish. I mean, we, we caught a voice in, you know, saying out in, in broken German. Uh, you know, it says, it says, oust. it says, oust. you know, and it's, oust. that means, yeah, it's like, oust. and I'm like, what the hell is that? That's a voice. But I don't know what the hell that means. You know what I mean? But, uh, hey, I'll see you later, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming into the chat room with us, brother. We always, uh, like you in here with us, man. You're a good guy. Um, yes, thank you, Oz. Take care. Have, of have a good Halloween, brother. Um, yeah, but it was just, it's so great that you know you can come across these cases and come up with an answer. You know, it makes you feel good about what you're doing. It does. Uh, it does, man. It gives you some kind of validation to what you're hearing, what you're experiencing. You know, it's it's pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool. Yeah, because like we like we said when we first started out, we wanted to help people, and that was definitely one case that I felt that we were able to do that. You know, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you know, so I, I know there's one case I want to get to the bottom of, and that's that one in uh, Newcastle. I want to get to the bottom of whatever the hell's in that house. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some the weird, thing, weird stuff in that thing, house. Yeah. The only issue with that one is it's a little bit of a drive to get there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm definitely getting a hotel room when I go back there. Like I, I'm going to go yeah. up on a Friday and. Um, and I'm going to stay the whole weekend and just investigate the, whole, the house the whole weekend. But I want them to be there because I think, you know, yeah. this is another one where I think the, the homeowner, which is Julie, is is a big part of what's going on there. I think she's a catalyst to the phenomena. And I think with her there, we're going to experience a lot more phenomena. I really, really do. And you got to make that one, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing the best I can here. Hopefully yeah. I can. I'll try to make it um, on a weekend where you're not you're not on call or anything like that because that's a case, man. You don't want to miss. No, I. That's when I want to make sure I am definitely there. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, when well, we I'll have... get I'll get with you and we'll I'll get with you and we'll figure out figure it out. So. Yeah, I mean that case. Uh, you know, me and Carl. Carl's my road dog, man. That guy. He's been everywhere with me, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. That guy, man, he's he's waiting up with it a few times with the driving, you know, the, the hours we drove. And <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's he's got more balls than me because I, I wouldn't have I, would, I, I think I spent no, not I slept, that far. Bro, I think I slept like halfway home just driving while I was asleep. I really oh don't my know. God. How, I'm not God. kidding. You. I'm really not kidding. I don't remember going like through certain places and I'm like, holy shit. I mean, it was terrible trying to keep awake, you know, investigating all night. Wow. And then leaving and driving That's four scary. and a half, four and a half hours to get home. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to make it. Dude, I slept like the dead when I got home, <laughs> dude. I'm sure. <laughs> I laid in bed and I think I was asleep in literally like two seconds. I was, I was so tired. I'm like, oh shit, I'm tired, man. This you're, is not, I'm not gonna make it. You're pro you're probably sleeping the whole entire time. You just don't know, <laughs> dude. It was just like we went to North Your Carolina. Body just I remember was moving? Oh that god, was, that was worse. Yeah, that was horrible. That was seven hours. Yeah. Oh God! I feel for you on that one. I yeah, don't know I'm how like, you did that. Oh yeah, Don, you're gonna drive? Yeah, buddy, I'll drive. Dude, you make nope. it an hour. I'm like, shit, you got to do an hour. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you, you got it. You got it the rest of the way, don't you? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, Thanks, Don. <laughs> I said, I'm tell you what, I'm driving. I'm like, these goddamn people got a lot of faith in me, man, because I am ready to go out at any minute. <laughs> 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 and I was driving your car. I was like, he "That's must what's really scary." Trust me. I said, "He must really trust me uh, with his goddamn car because I'm telling you what, I'm getting ready to go out." <laughs> I was worried, man. I was worried the whole time. I couldn't tell the way you all were sleeping. 
<laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was worse than years of my rough one. Years of my everyday going. <clears throat> and then you look over, you're like, oh, I wish I was sleeping like him. I'm so tired, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. That's but, but you were a trooper. You stayed awake. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's going to be me. like that going to Fort Mifflin. I'm going to be dying. Uh, I'm not. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not looking forward to the drive home. Oh, uh, no. But I'm not it, looking forward to it. At least, at least I'll have a couple people in the car with me this time. Yeah, I think um, Scott had contacted me, um, and he uh, he wants to come along with us. I said, yeah, you know, Greg kind of texted him out. I think we are going to go at one point, so. I'm gonna text him back. Say, yeah, we're okay. gonna do ninety bucks. You know, yeah, you come along. That's what we pay. We're all paying ninety bucks. We're not making any money on it. Um, but nah. the place is ours. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, I I cannot wait. We're gonna have some fun. I'm sorry. We always do. We always do. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's crazy. It went so fast. I mean, here we are. Already. Yeah. Next Friday. Yeah, we talked about it. And now you know it's here already. Holy shit. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna play a couple more EVPs. This was um, this is uh, from the York Emporium we investigated. That was mm, maybe about ten years ago too. It's been a while. Um, we had we had uh, investigated this place a couple times. It's kind of we can go there whenever we want, and uh, we were actually supposed to go there tonight, but uh, got canceled. So. Um, but yeah, this place is pretty haunted. It's an old place in York and um an old library. And it's definitely uh definitely haunted. We experienced a lot of stuff in there. And uh, I had a recorder in the far back of the uh of the library on a bookshelf and there's a woman that says something in the recorder and we were the only ones there. And, uh there was women there, but they had left. So I'll play this clip and you hear this woman and she, she says, hey, I know. Like, kind of like she knows the recorder's there. So I'm going to play this clip for you guys. You hear that part that cool. yeah, it's like hey, it's like a yeah. pause and then I know. Yeah, I'll put that clip so again. Clear too. Yeah, it's like I know. That's so cool. Like she knew the recorder was there. So I'm gonna play that clip again. It is cool. Yeah, it is. Awesome, awesome now, did, clip. Did she say? Did you? Did she say something earlier in that clip too? Was that's that me talking. Else? Yeah, that's me talking. Yeah. I'm like in the background talking. No, I mean I can hear other members in the background, but I thought I heard it sounded like another female voice, but in the beginning before that one, before she said, "I know." She says, "Hey." Um, she says, I don't know. Hey. That's what it was. That's what yeah. it was. That's what I was hearing then. Yeah, you hear her go, hey. Then it's a long pause. Yeah. That's it. I know. That's a good ass clip, actually. That's, that that is good. That's really clear too. Yeah, and I caught another really good clip. Remember back in the uh, the children's section, where uh, one of the investigators yeah. said she thought the uh, she thought she seen a kid, and um, she said, "I thought I seen a little kid back here, like a little blonde hair kid," and there was no kids there, but. Um, we capture a kid saying, uh, say a mommy. So I'm going to play that clip for you guys.
That's super clear. It is clear. That's um, yeah. there's Crazy. no kids. There. That was like two o'clock in the morning. There's there's not a kid in sight. There was no kids there anyway, but there were no. And you can and that was definitely inside the building. There's no way it would have been outside. Yeah, I mean, barely even heard anything. And that neighborhood is not the best of neighborhoods, and there's definitely not going to be a kid out there going, Mommy, at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. it's not going to happen. And, <laughs> and they ha- right. And I mean, the stuff that they were talking about in that place alone, they had said that they had seen a child in there. Yeah, and a woman. So it just it makes sense. Yeah, and a woman. Lady in white, wasn't it? Yeah, the lady in white. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a couple of customers had seen her like walking down the aisles and stuff of, of the uh, the library. We didn't see her, but <laughs> we never no, see her. I wish. <laughs> but I wish. <laughs> one of these times, dude, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see a full bodied apparition that in an investigation. It's I, gonna happen. I sure the hell hope so, man. Just it's gonna happen, you know, dude. We've been doing holy... we've just been doing it too long not to experience that. You know what I mean? That's, that's like the holy grail for an investigator, and we have yet to experience it, but hopefully one day. It's going to happen, I'm telling you. I, like I said, man, I, I think I've seen a full-bodied apparition. I've seen the shadow people, which is cool. I've seen them, uh, you know, for well, I've seen that, cases. yes. So, we yeah, have seen I've that. I've least to see. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen that, but... You know, I think I seen a full body apparition of that woman on the road that time. I think that was a ghost. I just can't explain that shit whatsoever. But why there's a woman, an old lady in a nightgown in February, running down the road at three thirty in the morning. You know, and and it's yeah, just that weird that no sense. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. shoes on, dude. Had no shoes on. It's like twenty degrees out. No shoes on. Short sleeve nightgown. Uh, kind of old school looking nightgown, had a little like flower, it looked like, looked like flowers on it or something. I couldn't really tell what it was, but you know, and you know, you pull up to somebody, you, you wind the window down, and you say, "Hey, you okay?" And they don't respond. That's that's weird, man. You know, and I asked her like Maybe. three or four times if she was okay, and she never even looked in my yeah. direction. You know, right. and it, it was just totally oh. weird, man. And, and it's not like I've you know that it's weird because three other members of my family have seen the same kind of shit. My daughter's seen something like that, and my father did too, which totally weird, man. That's like, weird. It and I had no, yeah, I had no idea. You know, my dad had seen something like that, and then we were coming home late for work one day, and I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna cut through this way and uh, to go to your house." He goes, "No, you're not." I said, what do you mean? He said, no, 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 no. You're not coming down that road right there. I said, why? He goes, about two weeks ago, I seen a ghost on that road. I was like, what? He goes, yeah. He said, man, I was going up the hill, man. There was an old guy in the middle of the road, like with a white pajamas on. He had white hair and white pajamas. He said, I hit him with the high beams. He was in the middle of the road. He said, I hit him with the high beams. He walked to the mailbox. He opened the mailbox up. When I got beside him, he reached in the mailbox and he disappeared. I said, get the hell out of here. He goes, wow. I ain't shitting you. He said, we ain't never going that way again. You go this way. I said, it's longer that way. He goes, I don't give a shit how long it is. We ain't going that way. <laughs> he said, I ain't yeah. never going that way again. He said, I'm telling you what yeah. I've seen. He said, I've seen that and I'm not going that way ever again. That was some kind of weird omen or something. He said, I'm, I'm not going that way. And, uh, he hasn't went that way since. He goes around that way. He does not go back that way to go home. And uh, I've drove by there at night hoping maybe I see it, but uh, I haven't seen it. And then uh, my daughter experienced the same thing. She comes home one night from work. It's like 1130. It was like quarter to 12, something like that. Comes into my room. I'm asleep. Dad. I said, what? She's like, uh, I see the ghost. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I said, where'd you see a ghost? She's like, I said, in the house? She's like, no, on the road. I said, what do you mean? She goes, there was a woman in the street. She was in the middle of the street. I hit my high beams on her. She walked to the mailbox. And when I got beside her, she was gone. I said, what? And then my wife goes, you hit her and ran her over. <laughs> my wife is all mad. Like, you hit her. She goes, you're going to have to go up and look. She probably ran her over. I'm like, 
why would she run her over? I was like, come on. She goes, she goes, really, mom? And uh, she's like, yeah, you ran her over. <laughs> I had to go up there. I said, like, come on, let's go. So I get in the car. We go up there. There's no one dead in the street. You know, and I'm like, and do where the where she's seen her, it's a big open cornfield. Like they, you can't you can't hide. You know what I mean? You're not yeah. gonna hide. Right. And dude, I, I I said, where'd you see her at? She said, right here. She was in the middle of the road. I said, was she like old clothing or anything? She said, no. She had like blue jeans on and a shirt, like a like a blue shirt. She walked from here to the mailbox. And when I got beside her, she said, I had my high beams on her the whole time. She said, when she got to the mailbox, I got up next to the mailbox and looked over. She was gone. Almost the same kind of shit my dad experienced. You know what I mean? That's yeah, weird. Almost similar. Yeah. That is yeah, that's weird. really weird. Yeah. I mean, what's, dude. With, what's, what's with the whole mailbox thing? Yeah. Reaching in the that's mailbox really weird. They're gone. Like they're going through, like they're going through a regular life, you know, that you, that yeah. almost like they're all still alive. Now, the lady I had seen on That's the road weird. was doing different shit. She was, like, flinging her arms all around, doing, like, really weird stuff. And then, I, you know, my buddy lived on that road. Matter of fact, where I seen her was right across the street from where he lived. And, you know, I'd see my buddy, and yeah. I was like, dude, um, what's up with the lady that was, you know, running down the street three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, something going on across the street. I said, some old lady was, like, jetting down the street down here, like, 3.30 in the morning uh, the other night when I was going to work. And he's like, huh? I said, yeah. He, I said, what, did something happen over here? He goes, there's no old people that live over there. I said, you shit me? He's like, no. And I described what the lady looked like, and he wow. just looked at me and goes, it sounds like the woman that's haunting my house. I was like, no way. He's like, yeah, dude. He said, my daughter, uh, Amber, sees this woman in white, uh, like lays on the floor and smiles at her and does all kinds of weird shit. And uh, I know Amber that's listens weird. to this show, so. Big shout out to Amber. I'm telling your story, Am. So, um, yeah, he <laughs> said, yeah, man, like, you have all kinds of weird shit happens in the house. I have to get him on here, uh, get my, my friend Bill, maybe get Amber on here and talking about their experiences in this house because they've experienced a lot of shit in this house. So I, I like to get him on here talking about some of the stuff that uh, they've experienced. Um, the, cool, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, the son... Uh, Will, he, he, he doesn't talk much about what happens, but uh, he had told the mother what had happened one time when they were in the basement, which was really creepy. Um, they were down in the basement doing something, uh, Will and his brother and I think his cousin, and they were leaving the basement, and they had pictures on the walls down in the basement. And as they're leaving, Will sees this black thing kind of following behind them, but it's like, hugging the walls and shit like behind him, like trying to hide, but he sees it in the reflection of the pictures. And it, I think he said it went okay. up along the wall, went up along the ceiling, but it was like this black thing. He, he said it was really creepy, but he could see it. He, the thing couldn't, couldn't tell that he could see it, but he could see it in the reflection of the, of the, uh, the pictures. And, uh, he said it kind of freaked yeah. him out. Yeah. Yeah. He said he seen it, man. It was like, it was coming behind him. Like, Going from wall to wall, kind of like hiding from them. It was weird as shit. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. But the story he was te- that uh, the mother was telling me. But they've seen Civil War soldiers. Um, at one point, I think in their yard they had a. I think they had a headstone, and they had a hard rain, and some bones had came up um, through the ground. And they they had to, they called the police. Yeah, they called the police, and they took the bones, and. Uh, he said he never heard anything back, but my buddy was a was a detective for Baltimore County Police. And he said, dude, they were human bones. He said, I knew what bones looked like. That shit was bones. He said, they were human bones. He said, but I never heard anything back, but they were human bones. He said, I knew what bones looked like. And uh, he was a detective, and he was a he was a detective for narcotics at one time, but I think also he was a detective for the occult, like crime stuff crimes done by cults and shit. So yeah, I'd like to get him yeah. on here talking about that. Yeah. Hey, Woody, what's up, man? Um, but yeah, they, uh, Woody Bush. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was a detective in, uh, occult crimes and he, he said some really cool stuff, man. He was, Hey Jen, what's going on? And, uh, 
we had a lot of stuff that he's he's told me about his house over the years and uh really really cool stuff uh seeing civil war soldiers uh this black thing i think they were arguing about something and um now they're arguing they were talking about somebody or something and a light exploded in their house it, it, dude, a lot of weird stuff happens in there but yeah um i think um uh, tommy had told me that one time the amber had came and got her and said that you know there was something rattling in the cabinet and they opened the drawer and it was a whole drawer full of pens and there was a pair of scissors sitting on top of all the pens and the scissors were the only thing they were vibrating shaking back and forth in the in the uh drawer but that's the only thing that was moving was the scissors and there was all these pens and pencils and stuff and all of a sudden it just stopped that's weird yeah dude that's creepy right yeah <laughs> that's really creepy. It is creepy. Yeah, they have a lot uh, of weird shit happens in there. I'll tell you what, you go in there and take a leak or something because he has like a bar shed. You go in there and take a leak, you just feel like somebody's watching you when you go in there. You're like, yeah, this is creepy. <laughs> it's kind of creepy in there. Nice. You get that you get that weird you get that that haunted house creepy feeling. You know what I mean? You definitely yeah, get it right. when you're in there. Yeah. You get downstairs, you definitely get it. And they they've recorded some stuff where you know they uh i think uh, my buddy's wife said that one night their dog toy kept going off kept going choo, choo, and the dogs would be in bed with them and uh oh wait what's up uh woody he's reading a message here yeah woody woody has a lot of stuff going on at his uh his workplace Strange. And uh yeah. Yeah, he, he he sent me a couple of videos of some some uh, light anomalies he's been catching at his work. They're pretty cool. I've seen them. Yeah, they're pretty cool. That's weird. Oh man, he said the bar owner. What? Right, let's uh I'm gonna invite him in real quick. That's a trip. Yeah, I mean, you got another traumatic death, so there you go. Uh, yeah. how's it going? Hey, Woody, what's up, man? What, what did you just on? say hey. about the, What did you just say about traumatic death? Yeah, I mean, you get that tra traumatic death going on, I mean, it's going to leave some type of imprint there. Yeah, See, in the bar, you're, yeah. You're like the, you're like the fourth or fifth person that's told me that, and the first two didn't know anything about the history here, and I just mm -hmm. asked them about orbs, eh? But no, yeah. what, I, what I wanted to say was, have you ever watched uh, Skinwalker Ranch? Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, I started to. So lately, there it was like two episodes ago. On there, they caught some orbs on their security camera outside in front of one of the buildings that they have a lot of activity at, and they were fucking so intrigued by it. And it was exactly what I've been seeing lately here, man. Wow, it was pretty. Like, I mean, wow. I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I'd love to put a fucking logical explanation to it, but I haven't been able to, and to see it like to see those guys that like know are smart and know all that shit then they're like you know think that's something and then watching the exact same sort of things here it was pretty pretty buzzy so yeah yeah there's that's there's great. a lot of accounts of some really weird shit on uh on the skinwalker ranch at one point they had two balls uh well actually a ball of energy came out of the sky and killed their dogs smashed them Smashed him into the ground, killed wow. him. Yeah, oh. yeah, man, that was oh, uh, really, eh? <laughs> yeah, man. When the skinwalker rings, it's it smashed and killed two of their dogs, and uh, they 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 have all kinds of weird shit on that place. And you know what's re even weirder is the federal government paid Bigelow ten million dollars to investigate paranormal phenomena on the skin ranch. He paid him ten million dollars to to investigate. Reports of werewolves, paranormal phenomena, and UFO phenomena. Paid him. I said, shit, I'd have did it for a million. <laughs> you had to pay him ten million. I'd have did it for a million. <laughs> shit. No problem. But yeah, that just goes to show you how much the federal government is into all the same kind of shit that we're into. You know what I mean? They're trying to find the answer to it too. They know it. They know what's going on. Oh, hell yeah. They know what's going on. You definitely know. It, it was in the emails I sent you. I can't remember how I got a hold of you. I think it was the email, eh? 
Yeah, yeah, it was an email. Yep. I'll, I'll shoot you a couple of these ones from recently. They're they're pretty buzzy, and there's like we there's a library in this building, and like there's this one book that seems to attract uh, an absorbent amount of them. And it's funny because we'll go like pull it off the shelf and put it on the table, and then go watch, and like then they'll like come out and like really rant like really random sizes and doing all kinds of weird things and be 60 seconds long where some of them are you know really short and that kind of thing but i don't know it's it's intriguing i think it's it's one of those things that like it's a creepy place like the the basement um furnace room where i watch the camera system is like as creepy as it gets but honestly man i've never felt like uncomfortable there i've always felt like welcomed it's so fucking weird <laughs> yeah that's a good thing i guess <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah because i have to go there every day at night by myself and do shit and it's like fuck i'd hate if that was the opposite so anyways i'm i'm still working here boys. i just wanted to tell you my my two cents and i'll uh i appreciate you keeping me company here oh no problem man thanks for calling in brother cheers lad. Right, take care. yep see you buddy take care that was kind of like remember chuck and dixie yeah, I remember. Well, you remember he used to work in the schools? Remember him and his yeah, wife I still worked got in the that, schools? That, you I still that have that clip he sent me of that. That is I do. a fucking creepy still, ass clip. Do you, do, do you have that? I don't have it. Do you still it. have that? I don't. Because I'm, I'm, I'll send it I'll send it to you because I still have it. It is creepy. <laughs> you got to send it over to I want to play it. You yeah. Send it over. I, yep. I, uh, do you do you have it in MP3 form? Uh, I mean, I can I can probably do it while I'm doing the show, but um, damn, that's a creepy clip. That is a good clip he caught, man. It's freaking creepy. People hear this shit, you're gonna be like, ew. It's freaky. Yeah, actually, I I had to get off. It's gonna get too involved, but maybe another uh, okay. show. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, do another one. show. We're just gonna do a. Uh, I like to do one uh, Monday night, maybe. Maybe do one for Halloween, man. You know what I mean? We could do. We could do. We're that. kind of back on. We're kind of yeah. back on episodes and shit because of uh, of you know, just me having a jacked up throat, not being able to talk very well. But um, well, yeah, maybe I like to do a whole let's episode. Plan, of just, let's just EVP. Yeah, well, let's plan for that for Sunday, and then I'll I'll uh, I'll send that clip over in the meantime. That yeah, that'd be I cool. Get prepared for it. Is when's Just Halloween? Let me know Monday? If there's any other clips that? You... Halloween's Monday. Sunday. Right? Is it Sunday or Monday? Or is it Sunday? It's, it's Sunday, isn't it? Oh, Monday. What are you talking about here? Thirty first. It's a Monday. Oh, it is Monday. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, the hell. Do a, do an hour of just street freaking evps man sounds good to me homie sounds great Works for me hell yeah well let's wrap it up tonight man we're going two hours and um played a lot of good stuff talked about one of our one of our good cases and um yeah man it was a good night good night it was a good night i enjoyed yeah. it hell yeah well, folks, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Thanks, everybody who came into the chat room, who's listening right now. And uh, we appreciate your uh, listening to the show. Uh, keep downloading the uh, Paranormal Journal podcast because we're definitely going to have a whole lot more stuff going on. I'm interviewing Bill Bean on Sunday night. So I'll have that downloaded next week. And uh, for your listening pleasures, he's come out with a new book uh, uh, about being an exorcist. So um very interesting i'm actually he sent me a copy of it i've been reading a little bit of it here and there when i can and uh we're going to talk about his new book um the uh i forgot what the hell it was already but uh, it's uh i'll get into that on sunday and uh, we'll have that out by next week and you guys be able to listen to uh bill bean uh, he's been on a lot of TV shows, uh, The Haunted, Ghost Nation. He actually did an episode with me on Ghost Nation. Uh, he uh, did Deliverance in the House up in uh, Newcastle. And uh, he's a pretty famous guy. He's been out there quite a bit. And uh, we're going to get into his story. So definitely tune in for that. 
Well, folks, Sounds definitely good, want to man. thank you for coming in tonight. We appreciate it very, very much. And yeah, uh, we you. will see you on Halloween. We're going to do EVP night. So definitely tune in for that. You guys are going to love it. So we're going to play some really cool EVPs. Oh, well, have Sounds a great good. weekend. Have a great weekend, Don. And uh, I'll get in touch with you, you on much. Sunday. And we'll get some uh, EVPs back and forth to each other. Sounds good, man. All right, my brother, have a good weekend. Everybody have a good weekend, and uh, we'll see you Monday. Night, all. Good night, everybody. That will conclude our broadcast of the Paranormal Journal podcast. Have a great night.